100%. Let's take a look at the globals first. So in the globals, there are functions and variables. We'll take a look at the variables and the functions. So the variables, let me zoom in here. That's right. Do not modify below, used in framework, experts only. <laughs> you know, uh, in this case, if people want to modify below, that's fine. But um, some of the things that I'm adding here, why is it? Am I, why am I in functions? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so the big one, the numero uno addition is, I'm a, I've said it many times on the show, I'm a lazy programmer in the sense that I like to have short bits to type. I like to have things quickly available to me. I don't like to do the same calculations over and over. One of the things that people have problems a lot with in Corona, especially when they're new, is they get in here and they say, okay, I've developed to a 320 by 480 environment, and then I go and I run my game on some other odd-sized, uh, not exactly the same uh, resolution device, and why isn't my rectangle in the upper left-hand corner like it used to be? Well, that's because you positioned it at 0, 0 instead of the left or the top. And so one of the things that I create is a bunch of global variables, very short, like W for width, eight for height, H for height, and these are shorthand notations to some existing uh, values and then some other things that are not shorthands. So uh, W is width, i.e. the content width, which is the design width. So if you designed your application to be 320 pixels wide, and that's what you put in Config Lua, then display content width will always say 320, even if the device is actually 360 pixels wide. So um, in addition to that, I like shorthand notation, so uh, there's a global center X, center Y, which is the same as display content center X and center Y. Then, as I was alluding to a moment ago, I have variables called full width and full height, which are the same as actual content. You can see where I'm, I'm lazy. I'd rather uh, type out five letters than display dot actual content width, which is something I constantly mistype and then have to find it in a syntax error that pops up in the middle of something else I was trying to code. It's just me being lazy. These are some for some reason here. These formats are coming out a little bit weird. Another one I have is uh, unused width and height. Now these variables are again. Let's say you design your app to be 300 pixels, 320 pixels is your design space, and you use uh, letterbox as your scaling. What can occur? is on certain devices you may have some extra pixels on the side because what it tries to do is keep the aspect ratio of your app perfect and fitting within your device and it can't it doesn't know what to do with those extra bits so people say why do I have black borders on the left and right or why do I have a black border on the bottom and top those are the unused portions of your area that have been sort of ignored because you're in letterbox scaling you have to you have to account for those on yourself uh, on your own. And so I do account for those. If unused width or unused height is non-zero, that means you're in a situation where you've got some extra space to fill. You've got to do something with it. And you can choose to do something or not do something. But it, you'll know I've got 30 pixels extra to fill if unused width is 30. Uh, device width and height, I don't use those too much. So these are sort of legacy for my own library. The big ones I use are left, top, right, and bottom. These are guaranteed to always contain the very leftmost, rightmost, topmost, and bottommost pixel positions, regardless of scaling, regardless of the device that you're running on. Uh, there should be very few situations where these do not report the exact pixel that if you want to abut a object to the upper left corner, then you can just get left and top, and you'll know that that is the pixel position for that corner and then you need to do the appropriate, um, create the appropriate object with the correct anchor points to get it there. Uh, another thing this does, just for uh, vague, so people look at this and go, well, didn't you just make these above? Yes, I did. Um, interestingly, when we got into desktop development, I ran into some, some very interesting um, issues, and these probably existed and I just never noticed them, but uh, things like negative zeros. Or, or, or weird, weird oddities like that. So as I was doing my initial calculations, I was making a mistake wherein I was producing numeric values that were technically zero, but came out as having a negative sign. So this business below here is just me cleaning that up to make sure that I don't have any weird uh, less than zero uh, um, 
or is this is this number negative kind of uh, comparisons when actually I have a zero. Um, orientation and is like I'm going to chime in here and and just let everybody know that these are typical for most programmers. Um, if you're going to be serious about mobile application development, you're going to get used to using these kinds of abbreviations. So what what Ed's showing here, use it. This just makes your life easier. Yeah, people people say, oh, globals are evil. Globals are evil only if you don't use them carefully. Right. And I've, I've come to the point where when I'm appropriately it makes your life better. <laughs> just be consistent, that's all. Yes. Don't use don't use left somewhere else in your code unless you really know what you're doing. Don't don't have a function where you go left equals and then you're like, well, there goes my left. I just messed up. <laughs> you know, just keep that in mind. Um, so I'm going to rush through the rest of these because they're not very exciting. Uh, the the key ones here on the globals were basically the left, right, top, bottom, center, uh, width, and height. We're going to be using those all over the place. So when you see those, those are non-standard. They're not Corona exactly. They're just my shorthand notation. Uh, some of the other useful ones in here are I have little uh, globals for everything. Are you on the simulator, iOS, Android? Are you on a Windows phone, OS 10, Windows, Anook, Amazon, Android? The more I, the more of these I discover, the more I put in because there's all kinds of special environmental checks uh, that you can do. I mean, this is pretty much most of them. There's a couple that are missing here that I have recently added to my personal library that need to go in here too. Uh, what device specifically are you on? iPad, iPhone 4, 5S, 6 Plus. I need to expand this for the iPad Pro. And then another thing I do a lot is I'm super, super lazy when it comes to colors. Like uh, when I'm doing prototyping, I make my things red, green, blue, yellow, orange, just so I can distinguish them quickly so I know, oh, the red one, that's the one I'm working on now. Or make this one orange because I need to do some debugging. And I, Where's the orange one? There it is. So I got color codes for everything, uh, and I got them in shorthand. And the way I do them is, for example, underbar black underbar. So I make sure that these do not conflict with existing names. But then I've got some short names too, which you're going to see me using a whole bunch in the code. T for transparent, W for white, K for black, R for red, G, B. You, know, you, you can pretty much read it here. I don't need to spell it out. Um, and that is pretty much it. Now, then there are a bunch of functions, and I won't go through all of them. Uh, but Ed, would you mind mentioning, if, if you jump back just a second, sure, sure. Uh, but why you're using the color name table? Color name table. Uh, yeah, so uh, what I've got is I've got color names and all colors, and what I've got is some global variables out there. So, for example, sometimes I do things where I'm just like putting a bunch of dots on the screen, so I have something to mark the space. I don't want them all coming out white. So what I do is I say like display new circle and then I have a function called random color. And it selects one of the colors out of my color list and chooses that as the color to return. And therefore I have these uh, lookup tables here in the global space so that the function itself can get the appropriate color. Now I could have made some of these things were I did them a long time ago and they're not entirely efficient but as far as cost, memory-wise, and complexity, and conflicts with your code, very little likelihood that these things are going to conflict with most people's code, so I just leave them in there. Um, so that's the reason. Uh, let's see. Some of the other things that are in here, one of the big ones is uh, I have a global function that is called isDisplayObject, which is a test to verify whether an object is, in fact, a display object, which is one of those situations you run into a lot where it's been removed, in the Corona space, but the Lua stub is still left over, and you need to check for that. So you don't try to like set velocity on an object that was just recently destroyed or uh, translated or something. Let's see. Uh, next frame, I got that from Sergey. Okay, the big one: listen, ignore, and auto ignore. You're gonna see me using those a lot. We've talked about these in the past, but these are basically shorthand notation for the runtime add event listener, runtime remove event listener. And post, which is runtime dispatch, but uh, it's a nicer format. It's more legible when I use it, so you can kind of see what's going on. And it's shorter. And then auto ignore, which is my, my uh, a big dog addition that I put in there, which is um, what it is, is a function that when run, it says, is this object still valid? Oh, it's not? Well, then stop listening for this event and return true, which means that I ignored it. 
So I put this little statement at the top of like my uh, enter frame listeners because I have the habit of starting an enter frame listener on a display object and then removing it and never doing a runtime uh, remo a remove event listener. I prefer to just let it clean itself up. So this is sort of one of those lazy programming things where people in the past have said, Ed, you're doing it wrong. It's evil. And I'm like, yeah, but it's so easy and I love it. So I'll just do it this way anyways. Uh, 